Winston and Felix here, and there are three things happening in the market right now that almost nobody's aware of, except for a few institutional traders, a few folks on Wall Street, and of course Winston, because he has the inside track. And in all seriousness, this is quite important, and it explains why September has been a relatively good month, uh, but it also gives us some, well, some things to think about, some red flags possibly that we might want to prepare ourselves for so that we're not you know, going to hit the wall. So Winston, obviously, cooling down by there, back in the in the in the grass. So uh, he's quite happy, right? So there, there are three things I want to walk you through. Number one, um, possibly the most important. I don't know. Maybe number three is the most important. We'll we'll, we'll see. Um, number one, we had really really good GDP data last week. So the U.S. economy grew much more than anybody had expected last week, and that's one of the reasons the market was you know pretty 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 decent shape, right? For, especially for September, which is usually the worst month of the year. And before we go, jump into that fully, I also want to remind you we're running a beginner trading challenge next week because well. We're up 93% so far this year. Most people are not. And I think everybody should be. I mean, all seriousness. I'm not promising you returns. But what I'm saying to you is I'll be transparent with you. I'll show you our system. I'll show you our structure. And we did exactly that event about a week ago. But we did it at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And a lot of you said you couldn't make it, even though like a thousand people or something showed up for it. But a lot of people messaged me and said, hey, I, I can't make it. Can you do it another time? So we're doing it again at 8 a.m. Eastern time. And that'll probably be the last time we run this for the, till the end of the year or something. So um, come and join us. It's free of charge. Our hope is that you become one of the million people we want to make financially free. That's sort of our, our, our goal and ambition here. All right. So what happened to the, um, to the GDP data? Well, everybody was expecting it to be bad. Uh, Goldman Sachs had said, we're expecting a massive downward revision. Basically, hold on to your hard hats. It's going to be a tough one. And then it came in and it was like, brilliant, wonderful, amazing. The economy is growing like Stella, 3%. Amazing. And I thought, surprising, very surprising. How did they do that? And um, you could, of course, say, well, it must be that the economy is chugging along better than, than, than expected. Well, it, once you understand the um, thuggery that happens with statistics, and it's, you know, the phrase lies, lies, and statistics is pretty accurate, you get a bit more suspicious of it. And they did a couple of things, which is kind of unusual. So they basically looked at July data, not the current month. August was sort of okay. But they looked at the previous month and they revised July's growth up massively by half a trillion dollars. That's 500 billion US dollars. You're thinking, where did we find 500 billion US dollars in the previous month? Well, apparently in your pocket. <laughs> so what they're saying is that the um, revised income data is just much, much higher. Um, they're also saying you spend more money on services, apparently a lot more money. And effectively what they're saying is that you are now half a trillion dollars richer than you thought you were. And they purely do this by revising personal spending and personal income. So they take spending, they took spending down a little bit on goods, they revised income up. And what's the gap? The difference between spending and income is savings. And savings adds to US GDP and to the economy. And they just increased that number by half a billion dollars, retrospectively. So I don't think you have this strong growth miracle. I think you just have a department of statistics or whatever that is um, doing its utmost to get re-elected. And before you rant off that I'm some sort of, you know, Trumpanite or something, it's got nothing to do with that. If he were in power, he'd do exactly the same thing. Well, he's not going to get re-elected a second time, is he? But, you know, you get the idea. There won't be a third term. That's what I'm trying to say. So, but they've all done it. Like every one of them have done the same thing. So this isn't a political party political thing. It's just they all do it. But it's important to understand why. Because the market looks at the data, most of the market, and goes, all right, GDP is growing. Brilliant. Economy is strong. Brilliant. Um, then we look at inflation's come down. Brilliant. But the economy is strong. So we're all good. We're going to get rate cuts. It's all good. And if you think of this through, why would the Fed cut by half a percentage point? That's a big cut for them if they thought the economy was great. I know they said to us, the economy is strong, but they have to say that. Otherwise, they cause panic. So in reality, the Fed is not as stupid as we think. They're looking through the numbers and they're saying, yeah, it's not as good as it looks, so let's cut. 
and the US government is giving you the sort of official propaganda line of like, everything's fine, uh, vote for us. So that's important to understand because it, it's going to affect consumer stocks particularly because that's where you're going to start to see the slowdown. And so I would be very cautious if you're in anything retail, anything um, consumer discretionary, you know, anything that makes fridges, TVs, cars, that sort of type of thing. I'd be, I'd be cautious, right? I'd be relatively cautious on that. Tesla might be a slightly different story because robo taxis and so on. Uh, in a way, they actually do well in a poor economy because people are going to go for the cheaper option and it would probably be cheaper than using Uber, right? So that could actually be all right. What's he doing up back there? Eating anything? Licking his lips suspiciously, isn't he? So that's one thing. But there are two more data points here. So the first is just, yeah, the economy isn't as good as they want you to believe. And then we have this little index called the VIX, which is the fear index. And if you watched me live last week, I said to you, hey, I think I'm going to going to set up a, buy a call option on the VIX. And, and, and I'm not recommending you do this, by, by the way. If you don't understand how that works, please don't. Maybe get a simulator, like a paper trading account and play around with it to start to learn, but don't do it with some real money. And nothing major, but it's sort of, well, it, it kind of uh, started to um, pick up a little bit towards the end of last week. And I'm going to watch that quite closely because the people who trade VIX and the VVIX, which is the volatility of the VIX, is all very complex, a little bit more the slightly more sophisticated traders, you know, like Winston back there. So they tend to look a little deeper into the data. So it's quite a good, good data point to look at, but like the bond market as well. Bond traders are, you know, Dallas, nothing else, but uh, they're very smart. So I, I like to watch these things and I think it's quite, quite a useful thing to look at. If you look at the greed and fear index published by uh, the mighty CNN, we're getting to greed. So you've got now probably made up economic data, slightly increasing fear, and at the same time, the masses are getting greedy. Not exactly a recipe for, a, for a wonderfulness. And then there are some positives. There is a silver lining here. Hedge funds have not been buying shares, basically. They're very underweight, the whole tech sector, software, semiconductors, the whole thing. So if the market were to go up much more, they would follow, they would chase, and that would drive us up further. So I'm, I'm a medium and long-term bull in many ways, but I'm very cautious on where we are right now. And I think most people are not. I'm trying to, to, to get that across to you so you understand why I feel like that and why it might be something you want to include in your sort of planning. But the, the really big one really is... There is a rule that the difference between the S&P, essentially, or like the stock market performance, I've got a chart here. I'll put this chart on the screen for you. Um, basically, the difference between the stock market and US reserves at Fed banks, they tend to move together. So if there's lots of reserves at the Fed banks, then the stock market goes up. But what we've seen since beginning of the year, they've gone in opposite directions. The market's gone up tremendously and reserves have plummeted. We saw once again an outflow out of US banks last week, um, significant outflows. Now, of course, they cover that up too. They seasonally adjust it and, and sort of do a whole wishy-washy thing so you don't see the data. But if you look underneath it, there is a very, very significant outflow here. And if you look at that chart, and I'll put it on the screen for you, that would sort of imply that, you know, we should be trading, I don't know, 20% lower <laughs> on the S&P, something like that. And that's not necessarily going to happen. But there are a bunch of warning signs. You've got an economy that's probably softer than you think. You've got um, Fed bank reserve balances that are much lower than, than, than they should be. Uh, the market's greedy and, 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 and no one's really panicking. And it's sort of like, Hmm, is this the, the the calm just before the storm? Right, we get we get hurricanes here. Like I think you're just getting one in the, in the south of the U.S. And you know the weather is perfect just before it hits. It's like blue sky. There is not a bit of breeze out there. It's just wonderful. And then you know um, your, your your ears fly away. So I'm not saying everything is going to be collapsing and doom and gloom. I'm just saying September historically isn't a good month. October. The month before a presidential election is usually not a good month. So what do I do in these months? I do almost nothing at all. And it's very, very hard. It's probably the hardest thing I do is to do nothing because you're like, yeah, but I should, shouldn't I, shouldn't I, yeah, I should. So I bet I'm not. And I'll continue to do, to do nothing because the data just says, be careful. 
be careful out there, my friends. So that's really my message to you. Let's be careful and use this time. Of course, about another four weeks of this, um, sitting it out to just learn, sit down and learn and you get smarter. And it's the best thing you could possibly do is like do some of these ideas you have, but do them in a paper trading account, a simulator instead, and then you'll learn from it. And come and join us on Wednesday and Thursday for our two day beginner trading challenge and, and learn how we do it. And maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but at least you'll understand how it works. You'll understand our three rules. You'll understand when I set up a trade, you'll understand when I exit it and how I automate the whole thing. And, and, and you know, how we therefore have a pretty decent life. Don't we, Winston? Looks pretty happy back there. So on that um, gloomy note, <laughs> I wish you a beautiful day, a beautiful weekend. And uh, we're going to go up a little mountain here. Let me show you. There's just a little, there's a little hill up there. It's not very high. It's maybe, uh, I don't know, 1500 feet high or something like that. Uh, and this guy is going to look forward to it. I think he will complain slightly that it's too hot, but he will enjoy it eventually. And on that note, all the best. See ya. If you're worried what your favorite tech stocks are going to do next week, you found the right video. Stick around. We're going to walk through Tesla, Amazon, Nvidia, Palantir, SoFi, PayPal, Meta, Apple, Google, MSTR, CLSK, Bitcoin. Yeah, we're looking at a little bit of crypto here. We're looking at the NASDAQ, the S&P, and also the VIX, the good old fear index. 